Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam. SNS42. So, I'm going to have two parts for you again this week. We got quite a bit of uh, footage, some video from this past week and past weekend of some projects that I worked on, and uh, we're going we're gonna to throw that in there. I've also got some viewer appreciation mail that showed up this week. We're going to go into that. I had a very special guest come by and see me and visit with me. And we did get a clip of that. And he also brought some viewer appreciation mail with him whenever he showed up. Uh, really nice surprise there. So uh, you guys will get to see that. And uh, like I said, we've got, I do have some, some work that I did uh, mostly last weekend, actually, last Saturday and Sunday. I spent a little time out here in the shop. I got one project done for the Monarch lathe, and that is the coolant spout, the leaking problem that I had. I uh, went ahead and, and jumped on that. I want to do a repair. So, so we got that done, and I got that to share with you. I also had another little, sort of like a little rust job that I had to do last weekend. Uh, somebody called me up and said, hey, it's actually a, uh, an axle out of a uh, out of a jeep and they needed some help with this axle so they asked if if it was something that i could do did i want to do it and i told them sure so we got that taken care of i got it all on video something it's something i haven't shown in a video before so i thought it would be pretty cool to share what i did and it's uh it's not machine work uh, it's more mechanical work but i did involve a little bit of the machine work too you know, that's just, uh, I guess that's a machinist style. You know, you got to add a, a lather mill in there somewhere. So we got that to share with you. And uh, that, that'll be a, in uh, part two, actually. So I'm actually filming this kind of late. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty late. It's almost 9 o'clock now at work. This is our, this is our inventory week at, uh, where I work. So we're having to stay late, not only for work, for jobs, but we're having to do inventory and friday night we've all got to stay real late to uh, finish that so i'm trying to get a little jump start on some of the video making for you and have some of it done so that saturday i'm not out here half the day making videos and trying to get them uploaded for my uh, regular two o'clock scheduled release that i try to stick to so uh, i guess that's about it and uh, also i was going to point this out probably wondering what the heck is that it looks like some dentures or something right so these are some some fake teeth that Elena's got for her costume and she part of her costume she wanted to have the old school style braces that kind of come around your your head and you know it hooks to your head or something like that which I actually know really nothing about just going off of memory of seeing them in movies on TV or whatever so I threw this together tonight before I started this and I probably had about an hour in it but I'm just I'm trying to let the epoxy dry <laughs> but anyway I took a stainless steel welding rod 1-8 welding rod and just hand shaped it and then I, I uh, welded some stainless washers on the end so that she could connect it in the back and I drilled some holes in the fake teeth and used some fast dry epoxy and uh, stuck the rods in there and epoxy them. Hopefully they'll hold. So, anyway, maybe, maybe you can get a little better shot of it right there. <laughs> it's just, it's just crude. You know, there's no, they're not the same. I just hand bent them over there on the anvil and then uh, welded the rings on. So, I'm just trying to let the uh, epoxy set right now because tomorrow she's going to be using that at work as part of her costume and uh, which by the way she's going to take some video of so that we can share it with you guys and and, uh, and see what she looks like for Halloween so anyway I just thought I'd show you, share that with you too <laughs> it's kind of funny I, that's a that's a one-off job right there man I ain't never done anything like that <laughs> So anyway, we'll go ahead and get to the video. We've got some viewer mail, and we'll get to some projects, okay? Hope you guys enjoy, and uh, we'll be talking to you real soon.
Hey guys, I'm gonna open some viewer appreciation mail. And me too. And Elena's gonna join us. I'm dressed like this because I went to work looking like a jerk off today, but I wanted to open this mail. I'll tell you what happened. So I came home at lunch, minding my business, like I do every day with my friends. The mail lady comes up, she goes, I have a package you have to sign for. So I signed for it and then I gave her some candy for Halloween. She's very excited. Oh, very nice. I know, I said, happy Halloween. Your mother gave it to me, but I can't have candy. So then I signed for it and it's this package. And it came all the way from Greece. And I asked yep. Adam if I could open it, and he said no. But now I'm here. I've seen how you open packages. You open them like Christmas gifts. <laughs> you got to be a little delicate with some of this stuff. I can be delicate when I need to be. Well, I'm a lady. Not with these. You don't know how to be. Just rip them open. You gotta I be love careful. ripping open packages. I know. That's why I said no. You can't open this one up. This came from Demetrius. <laughs> Jimmy. Came from, um, I know him as Jimmy. And uh, how do you say his name there? Demetrius Poly Polychronus. That's a cool name. Yeah, he's from Greece. I don't know what city he's from, but uh, me and him has uh, we've exchanged a few emails. And Jimmy, he actually has a uh, he has a YouTube channel also with some pretty interesting videos. I've watched one of his about some. Uh, gravity feed oilers that he restored and he did a really nice job on them so I'll uh, I'll I'll find his link and post it up there to the video so that uh, if interested you guys can check his videos out too open it so let's see what I waited all day so let's see what Jimmy sent us he did a really good job taping this thing excellent up. taping I couldn't peek it at Christmas time try to get in that thing I think he's trying to hide all the seams here Adam has to triple wrap my presents all foreign language and just like his uh it's literally in his, greek his address there you know i don't i don't know how to read that <laughs> you know what to say it's all greek to me yep it's the same let me see i think old people say that oh look at that Ooh, it's a fancy box well i mean i got it on the right spot the first time Okay. Oh my god, bubble wrap! Give it to me! It's actually pretty heavy. I shook it. It didn't break. Can I have the bubble wrap, please? I like to pop it. Don't play with it right now. Okay, what we got here? Ooh, Thingma Bobs and Limity Gibbets. I'll take that. Okay. Uh, looks like we have some taps. And we For got tapping? A, we got a letter here. So, let's see. UNC 7 8 So we've got some 7 8 taps, and nice. I believe this is 1 inch taps. Those in the flange. So let's, uh, we got a, we got a letter there. Oh, you got doinked. Tom <laughs> Lipton just doinked me. He said he was going to. <laughs> Did you open it yet? Yes, I've already opened it, Tom. <laughs> I've got him pulled up on my screen there, and I told him I was about to open up nice? a viewer appreciation gift. He said, He'll doink me. <laughs> Let's see. It's excellent packaging. Excellent. Got them all. Got them all taped together here. I love the bubble wrap. Okay. I'm trying to be. You're killing me. I'm seeing if this is a. Uh, it's got to be a one inch. Man, and that. wrapped again? Wrapped again. You got some skills there, Jim. That's some of that. That's some nice some wrapping right there. That's that oil paper. Okay. That wax paper. It's like a candy. And it don't look like I'm going to get it open without tearing it. You ruin everything. Oh, shoot. Keep it kid friendly. I said shoot! Oh, it's a screw! One inch eight, unified national course. <laughs> but that is a different profile from what what I'm used to seeing there. That is, that's a bit different. That, 
It almost looks like an acme thread, but it's, I'm not sure. Mm. We're going to have to do some well, looking to, it up on the internet. I'm going to have to do a little bit of research and find out what we got here. So it looks like there is uh, three of each. There's, uh, there's one more right here. And these other ones are seven, eight. So we'll, uh, we'll check, we'll go into these a little further. This, this feels like a tool bit, maybe. Maybe. A piece of stone from the Greek islands. <laughs> it looks like a piece of tool steel. Nice, a big piece of metal. Looks like a three quarter. Okay. Let me feel uh, the consistency. I think it's cobalt. Yeah, it is. I can tell by the weight of it. <laughs> Let's see. It's got to get tested with your thing on the jig. It's a three quarter tool bit. It's exactly what I said. It from was. Czechoslovakia. <gasps> what? Things and, from all uh, over the place. Ten percent cobalt. Mm -hmm. Nice. There's, there's Tom again. <laughs> He's dinging me. <laughs> I just sent him a reply. <laughs> all right, so we got some really cool taps here. Super cool. And he's got a letter here, and and uh, most likely I'm not going to read through all this, but uh, yep, we got we've got a lot to read here, and. It looks like he's going to go into the uh, specifics of the tools here. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Uh huh. So, let me uh, let me do a little bit of research, and we'll come back and uh, we might talk about these again. But anyway, Jimmy, uh, thank you very much for the gifts. Thank you. It was uh, it was awesome, especially whenever you get something from overseas, man. It's it's uh, just a it's just like a a nice treasure to to get something like this from from a, a fellow YouTube viewer from overseas. And I'm uh, very curious as to what the taps are used for, so we're gonna check into it, and we'll read your letter, and thank you very much, man. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, bye. Thanks for brightening up my Monday. <laughs> Monday's the worst. Yep, let's, uh, let's see what Tom's looking. <laughs> keeps Tom, me. you're ridiculous. <laughs> oh, we talked about Tom in here, too. Yep. All right, guys, we'll be bye. back. Bye. Okay, so now that we don't have the peanut gallery out here with us, I can talk to you guys a little bit more about this. Um, I, I read Jimmy's note here, and like I said, I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but I think there's a few things in this note that's worth mentioning on video, because uh, he's talking about some of the uh, tool companies over in his, in his area, and uh, a couple other things that I'll mention right here out of his letter. Videos like yours and also Tom Lipton's, Keith Fenner's, Mr. Pete, and many others are reference point for all novice machinists like me. That does not mean that we can do what you can, but it gives us ideas. Um, another great thing is that all of you managed to create a community to share and exchange knowledge. And he's right. This is something that doesn't happen in Greece. Although we have great craftsmen, machinists, etc. Uh, so he is actually from Athens, Greece. Very, very cool. Uh, I wasn't sure what city until he. I read his letter here. So about the tools here. So this brand is called. I, I assume you pronounce that Narex. N a r e x, and he talks about that company in here. Uh, all the tools are made in Czech, Czechoslovakia, Narex company. It's still in business, it makes high quality tools. And he uses the tiny version of the high speed steel cobalt blanks. And by the way, the tool bit is a 10% cobalt, uh, three quarter inch tool bit. Very nice, it's brand new, never been ground on. Uh, many reputable brands are from Czechoslovakia, like Narex, Kin Kinex, Summit, and Skoda Tools. And uh, gives a link there, Skoda, and also mentions that James Kilroy uses a Skoda in uh, is his video, uh, K&T Crank number one. So, uh, so he's giving me a little story how he, how he acquired a lot of these tools. And uh, also, he gave me his Skype address. He said he would love to Skype with me one day. 
and uh, he is eight hours be or I'm eight hours behind him. So, uh, very cool letter. Thank you, Jimmy. I really enjoyed reading that. Uh, about the taps, I'm still a little confused about this type of tap. Now, this is a one inch eight, and then this one is a seven eighths nine, just like your standard imperial sizing taps. But the only difference is, is that the diameter is smaller. And that's why they look they look flat. And at first I had said that kind of looks like an acme. So I'm still not sure exactly what this is used for. So if if somebody whoever's watching, if you if you understand this or even Jimmy, you can tell me why the taps are undersized the way they are. I measured the one inch, you know, and usually a tap measures a few thousandths bigger than the nominal size. And that measures 914 thousandths across here. So, uh, without using it, I don't see that, you know, tap a hole, I don't think a one inch bolt would screw into it. So, um, got to do a little more, more research on these and find out what they're actually used for. But anyway, so I just wanted to touch on that and tell Jimmy thanks again. This company does a, a great job of packaging. They use this wax paper and they put oil on it, so it preserves the tools for a very long time. And they still use the little cardboard boxes, although this may be some older stock, some uh, you know stuff that's been around for a while. So, anyway, again, thank you very much, Jimmy. It was a pleasure talking to you uh, through your email and the letter and the nice gifts, man. I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. So while we're still on the subject of viewer mail, I also have another package that showed up. This comes to us from Jack Hoying, and he's he's already sent me a couple things in the past, and he sent me another little box here, and he says, Adam, a local hospital was changing out all of their surgical supplies, so I picked up a bunch of clamps and such. Maybe they'll come in hand, handy for a repair job sometime. Jack. P.S. Yes, these have probably been inside a lot of people. I love that P.S. on the end. So Jack sent me a nice little assortment of surgical tools here, and uh, we got the uh, we got several of the style. Again, last time this was brought up, I could not remember the name of of these things. I know what it is, but I can't think of it now. <laughs> so I'm sure I'll get reminded with 30 uh, comments. Uh, so anyway, there's your clamps that lock. We've got a couple of those. These are are uh, like straight, kind of like little needle nose pliers here. Uh, they don't have any of the grooves machine on them, they're just flat. That's another one that's flat, there's no grooves machined in it. This one has a little, little. Uh, well, that's another curved one here. And then, so there's, that's a, that's a straight one. So two of these are like little scissors, little shears. We got two like that, so, and they're all clean. I'm sure they're all. I mean, obviously they're all stainless steel. So, got a nice little assortment of these little goodies right here, and I'll I'll put a few over here in the box, and we'll probably take a couple inside and uh, give to Atlanta. She, we got a little toolkit inside for different things. So, and uh, you know, there's there's a few in here, so. Um, you know, I don't mind uh, sharing some of these with somebody else too. So, uh, time comes along, somebody needs one of these, I'll I'll uh, I'll pass them along. So, thank you very much, Jack. I appreciate it, man. Hey guys, I went ahead and took the coolant spout off the Monarch lathe. I showed this to you in the video. This is where it's leaking in this joint right here. I want to attempt to so uh, silver solder this up see if I can seal it. And I'm not sure how it's going to go just because there's probably a lot of dirtiness down inside here. So I'm about to go over there and wire brush this area here but getting down inside there to get it clean I'm not so sure about. So what I might have to do is I've used some of my fast evaporating cleaner. I've sprayed it try to get it down in there. What I might have to do is, is warm it up, heat it up, kind of boil the crud out is what I'm hoping. 
but even then I'm not sure if the silver is going to take down in there and bond. So we're just going to give it a shot. It's worth trying and hopefully I can get it fixed and if we don't then we'll move on to maybe we'll just buy us a new and replace it. But it is all solid brass so it would be a nice one to have and not sure if that's how they connect it but I'm assuming that's how they did from the factory is silvered it in there. So we're going to see if we can get this thing fixed up. Alright. So I told you wrong, I lied. I assumed it was all brass, but it is not. I didn't even think to check it with a magnet. <laughs> but you can see the different colors there. So the flex line is actually steel, and then the ends are brass. But the patina that was on it, and there's a little bit of paint on it, it looked like that it was all solid brass just by judging by the color. So you can see this in here. Definitely tell that it's been silver, silver soldered in. And I believe that the end that's leaking was done also the same way. It looks like there's remnants of the silver still on there. So we're going to try it again. And... Uh, We'll see if we can repair it. All right. All right. I'm going to do a little preheat. I thought I'd show you my torch I'm going to use. Again, Smith. This is just a soldering torch. Looks straight to the acetylene. And it just pulls in oxygen from the atmosphere. And it's perfect for soldering. You adjust your heat. I just want to do a preheat before I even start this to try to see if there's any crud in there that's boiling out of it. Looks like some of the solder's trying to come out already. It's getting pretty hot. I can see the steel discolored now. I'm just trying to get some of this flux down in there while it's hot. Maybe it'll help clean it. Might be a little too hot now, but it seems to be doing pretty good. So we might get lucky here and be able to solder it. I think it's cooled down now. Alright. Let's put a little heat on it again and see if it'll suck that solder down in here. This is just one of the spools I grabbed. Burns a Matic brand. Silver bearing lead free solder.
All right, I think I'm filling the joint anyway. I think that might have it. Did a little better than I expected. <laughs> I'll have a little bit of, I have one drop over here, it kind of rolled down. I'll have to uh, clean it up again. So, uh, now it looks good. I think that might work. So we're just going to let that cool to, uh, you know, ambient temp. And I'm getting ready to go down to, I'm going to go down to Lowe's and go ahead and buy a ball valve for the, uh, you know that this is going to hook to and we're going to go ahead and replace that and when I get back we'll uh, we'll clean this up and put a new ball valve on there you know what really grinds my gears going down to the store and buying something that you think is an American made item only to further read the fine print and it says made in China Right here on the tag it says, American Valve. Greensboro, North Carolina, made in China. Why can't we make this kind of stuff, huh? I just don't get it. But that's the way of the world, right? You know, everything you go down to the store and buy is imported junk. So, this is gonna be the new valve for the Monarch and I'm gonna remember this because this may not stay on there for a long time. I, I would rather have an American made quality part on the Monarch. But, like I said, we'll go ahead and install it and use it, but I'll be uh, keep my eyes out for a better one and possibly even the valve that's on there now, I might see about rebuilding that, seeing if we can get it working better. So anyway, just thought I'd rent for a, a little bit. It's, it's common, you know, you go down to the big box store and you want to get stuff like this and everything in the bins is imported. It just burns me up, man. So much stuff that could be made here on our shores and put our people to work and let our businesses thrive. But no, it's all sent overseas and imported. <laughs> That's what grinds my gears. All right, well, I'm ready to reconnect all this stuff again. I went ahead and pulled the old, the old ball valve or gate valve off there and got the spout cleaned up. I wire brushed it. It's got a nice look to it, actually. I actually like that. And there's a good shot at the end of it where I silver soldered it in there. It looks like it's welded really good, and I think that'll hold. There's the other end there cleaned up. So, I've got a couple things to bring up here. This is all pipe right here, you know, so you can pretty much build it any way you want. And after my rant earlier, I got to thinking, I remember seeing a gate valve around here somewhere. So I started hunting. And over there in my bins on the very bottom, I found two never used gate valves, or actually, I think these are considered ball valves because it's a ball and seat on the inside of it, but they've never been used, and I remember that these things were over in them bins, and this is, and this is probably some older stuff, you know, been around a little while, Milwaukee Valve Company, Milwaukee Valve Company Incorporated, so I'm willing to bet these are probably American made, so what I'd rather do is actually use one of these over here, you know. I actually think that looks better. It's got a little more A-bomb size to it, right? Well, I don't have any of the proper uh, pipe nipples or adapters that I need to hook this up right now. So, if I go down to the store again, I'm just going to be getting more of that stuff that, you know, I don't like to buy. So. I'm just going to hold off on this for now. So I got a good valve that I didn't have to buy because it's already in our stock here. 
and I think this will be a really good valve to use for the coolant. So we're going to go ahead and hook up this cheapo for now, and in another time I'm going to gather up the right hardware I need to adapt to that bigger that bigger ball valve there. Alright, so I went ahead and attached it to the one side. Of, this is this nipple went right here. And I use this stuff here, Loctite 567. It's a thread sealant for pipe. And it just takes a little bit. I just put a real thin layer around it. Usually you get a little more than what you need. Kind of rub it around there. I think that'll work. That, that feels like where it seated last time, you know, whenever I unscrewed it because it's getting kind of tight right there. And I don't think I'm, I want to go all the way around again. So, I think we'll leave that right there. Let me check it on this side, see how it feels. Yep, I think that'll work good right there. Let me get a rag. And this piece here actually pivots. It's like a banjo joint. You can actually, it's, it's pretty snug, but you can pivot this. There's a clamp here that you can loose and you can raise and lower this. Although I've got it, I've got it about as high as it'll go right now. All right, so last thing, we're gonna put the little spout on there. Put a little bit more of my thread sealant, just a little bit, okay. And a little touch, I'm going to use my new Billings wrench that I showed you that I got at the flea market, the 5810. Okay, anymore it's going to start twisting that pipe. All right. Well, let me put these tools up and we'll fire it up and see if it leaks. Right. So, I think you can see the the new Chicon ball valve there. So, what do you guys think? Here we got the the new never used Milwaukee ball valve. You can see it how it operates inside there. Got that little ball and seat. Think that looked better over here? I actually think it would. So, like I said, I've got to replumb it for the larger size. This is three quarter pipe. This is quarter pipe. I think that uh, elbow there might be three quarter also. So, all I'd really need is a three quarter nipple to go from there to there, and then a reducer bushing to go from this to the stem. So, let me know what you think about that. I, I think I kind of like the looks and feel of this on here better than that ball valve there. So anyway, let's try it out. make a mess. It is full screen. So got a lot of flow. <laughs> Splashing all over down here. Okay. I think that was just for me right there. It was a little drop, but I think I splashed that up there. All right, so I'm just looking at all the joints here, our new welded joint here. I don't see any leaking. So I think we're good to go. That just feels weird to me now because I'm, I'm so used to having that actual 
handle up there that you twist, that you turn with your hand instead of the, the ball valve action. But it'll work. It'll do the job for now. Come on. Yeah, I, I think I've got actually got to lower it now, and that's why I had it where it was, so that you can bring the spout down a little bit closer. Okay. Alright, guys. It is working better than the uh, the old valve that I pulled off because it was just wore out. So you get a little bit better flow action using the new one. Okay, well I'm happy I finally got the leaking stopped anyway. Uh, but we're going to come back to this another time. And we're going to hook up one of those, I think. Okay, see you next time.